Hello, hello, hello. Divinely ordained lady like servants of God. My name is Gail. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Daughters of Hadessa. And today I would like for us to talk about change. What is change? Change is turning away or doing things differently than we've always done and getting a different result. You know, change, change is a word that we very rarely want to hear. Change for the better, change for the good, change. But change requires work on our behalf. Change is something that we must not only work at, but discipline ourselves. Change requires restraint. Change requires doing things differently than the way that we've always done them. Change is a necessity. The world is changing all around us. Our bodies are changing. Time is changing even as we speak by the second. Change is a necessity. So how do we change? What must we do to change? First of all, if there's something going on in our lives or something that we see in our lives that we really don't like, we must change it. It's not going to change on its own. And sometimes we have to look in the mirror and be willing to change ourselves. And this feminine journey is all about change. Daily changing from who we are to who it is that we would like to become from what it is that we do into the results that we would like to get by doing things differently. Some of us go to a job and we change jobs and we go from one job to the next job and we have the same problem on every job. Everywhere we go, there's a problem. Change has to take place. Because in case you haven't noticed, you are the common denominator on every job. Different people, but you show up and there's a problem on the job. Change must take place. You must look at yourself and see you what it is that you are or are not doing and change change takes place when we look at ourselves in the mirror and we become real with ourselves and we ask ourselves the question what's going on with me what's be going on in my life why can't i get the results that i need some of us simply need to go back to school. And we refuse to go back to school because school is hard. School takes too long. I don't have the time. I work. I have the kids to raise. How am I going to go back to school? I hate math. That was one of my biggest hindrances. I hate math. <laughs> Some of us need to look at our family line and break some generational curses because some of the things that we are doing is the same things that our mothers did, the same things that our grandmothers did, and the things that we see our children doing now. Change has to take place. How do we change? By turning away from doing those things that we don't find productive or pleasing in our lives. We're doing the same things, getting the same results. I think it was Einstein who, who defined that as insanity. And I do understand that some of us feel stuck, like our backs are up against the wall. We don't know how to get out of that stuck position. 
But sometimes we are in position of being stuck because things need to change. We don't handle our money right. We go out and purchase things that we want instead of taking care of the things that we need. And then we find ourselves homeless or can't pay the rent because we have not changed and grown up and learned how to budget and take care of home first. Things has to change. Some of us who are man oriented in the sense of you got to have a man. You can't live life without a man, but you get a man and not able to keep a man because you refuse to change. You got a big mouth. You say all kind of things and anything. You beg for the man, you cry for the man, you pray for the man. And then when you get the man, you want to be the masculine dominant one in the relationship trying to control the man and tell him what to do. Want to keep him in your pocket. Want to restrict him like he's your child. You want a man, but you don't want to do what you need to do to change to keep the man. And even if it's not about a man, whatever in your life, you want to be defined as a feminine, classy, elegant, beautiful lady. But your mouth is reckless. Four-letter words roll off your tongue without hesitation. You got a nasty attitude. You treat people any kind of way. Every other word is a curse word. But you think because you're dressed and you look like a lady that you are a feminine lady. No. You've got to change. Restrict. Discipline. Be determined to do things differently to get different results. I like to use an analogy of shoes. From the time that we are born, newborns, our parents used to have these knit shoes called booties that they would put on a newborn, an infant's feet. Then the infant would grow into a little toddler, start walk, trying to walk. So you buy walking shoes. Your parents, godparents, whoever bought walking shoes, hard bottom shoes for the child, the infant, the toddler. Once the toddler learns to walk and are able to wear a little softer bottom shoes, your parents will purchase different shoes, little patent leather shoes, little church shoes, shoes to wear to little weddings and different types of uh, bar mitzvahs or birthday parties or shoes that children wore. When the child becomes a, a teen, Parents still taking care of teenagers, purchase different shoes that are in style for the teenager, unless the teenager had a job and could buy their own shoes. From a teenager, we go into young adults. Young adult more than likely has a job and is able to purchase the style of shoe that the young adult wants. The young adult grows into an adult. An adult basically purchases shoes to reflect the type of job that they wear. 
if you work work in corrections or as an officer or things of that nature you need um combat boots maybe steel toed shoes uh working in factories and things of that nature doing any type of construction um you know timberlands and things of that nature you work in a corporate by your heels your stilettos um dress shoes for men and then you grow into a different quality of shoe as an adult shoes that cost a little more money shoes because you choose to purchase these shoes shoes because you have to have these shoes because this is a different type of shoe a different brand of shoe. This shoe is a shoe that you just cannot live without. So you make sacrifices to purchase the shoe. You discipline yourself to purchase this shoe. You restrict and restrain yourself from doing any unnecessary shopping, partying, or whatever to save money to get this shoe because it's a quality of shoe that you want to reflect and wear so you do whatever you need to do to save to get that shoe, different kind of shoe, a change of shoe. How much more valuable is a change of life to get a different result? A better quality of life. You could spend $1,200, discipline your whole lifestyle for a pair of shoes. But you can't take the time to invest in changing your life to get a better result in life that is priceless. Our whole life. It's a cycle of change. We went from our parents purchasing our shoes into uh, children's shoes, to teenage shoes, to young adult shoes, to adult shoes, into picking and choosing a higher quality of shoe, an expensive shoe. How much more valuable would it be for us to invest in all the cycles of life that we have gone through, bumping our heads over and over and over, doing the same old things, getting the same old results, to simply decide, make the decision to change our lives, change our attitudes, change our mindsets change from doing the old into doing something new trying something new even in our relationships a lot of us ladies we look for the man to initiate and to um, compliment us oh i've been in this relationship for over six, seven, eight, nine, fifteen years, he changed. He don't take me out no more. He don't do the things that he used to do. How about you? You've changed. And in that change, you stopped doing the things that you used to do also. 
We are quick to point the finger and say what he's not doing, but we don't look at the fact of how we've changed, how we've become couch potatoes, how we look at the housewives and the basketball wives and scandal and all of these other shows, the haves and the have nots on TV. And then we think that our lives are supposed to reflect what's going on in fantasy land on a reality show where somebody else is getting paid buku mega bucks to cut the fool and act the way that they do. And we want to bring that drama into our lives, into our households, and want our men to step up and do what somebody's doing on TV. But we've changed. Men like a hunt. Men, men are natural hunters. When we get settled and complacent, because we've changed, men get settled and complacent, but women, we expect for him, oh, he don't take me out. Oh, he don't do anything with me anymore. You're not giving him a chase. There's nothing for him to hunt. He already got you. You're complacent. He's complacent. I've been with him five, six years. You're together, but you're not happy together. Honey, get up. Get your hair done. Get your nails done. Take care of you. Get you a facial. Go to the spa. Get up. Get dressed. Put on your little jeans, your little heels, nice little shirt, little leather jacket to the waist, and go out and take you out. You start taking care of you and valuing you and appreciating you. He's going to take notice. And he's going to wonder, where are you going? And you don't have to be going out with somebody else. You don't have to be going out with the girls. You could go sit at Dunkin' Donuts and get you a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or whatever your drink is, hot chocolate, and just chillax for a couple of, uh, maybe an hour, hour or two. Think, write, be creative, do something different, and go home, give him a kiss. Do whatever you need to do. Say good night and get up the next chance you get and do the same thing and start working on you and treating you and doing things different and allow him to see that you are interested in you and he'll come back, bounce back and value you. Because you're valuing you. The change happens when we have children. Oh, I bore his children. And now my body is not the same. This, that, and the other. If a man loves you, he's going to love you regardless. To what? But you got to keep things interesting. You have to spark his attention. You have to initiate some things also. And not just expect and say, oh, the man has changed. You've changed also. And the change must take place. And even if things become mundane and redundant in your life, you have to learn how to be creative and do something different and do something new and do something interesting. Keep the relationship spark with passion and challenging just different men love when you keep challenge in the relationship it's the same woman the same girl but i never know how she gonna come at me or how she gonna come in a beautiful way not how she gonna come at me with a bad attitude or i don't know you know if i can go home tonight because i don't know how she gonna be she bipolar she's schizophrenic Things of that nature. No. Be challenging and creative in a different way. You change too. But we don't like to look at the things in the way that we've changed. We only say, oh, the man has changed. He don't do this no more. 
He don't compliment me anymore. He doesn't say that I'm pretty anymore. He doesn't say I look nice. He doesn't notice that I got my hair done. He doesn't notice me anymore. Changing something that women look at, we are the ones that pay attention to each other's hair and nails and things of that nature. You can't expect for a man to look at you and see the th same things that women see in other women because men don't think like that. They're not uh, focused on those things, but they do get focused when you're creative and you give them a challenge and a hunt and, and, and pique their interest and in the things that they are interested in engaging in those things and ex instead of expecting this big fantasy that the world revolves around you and that he has to always be the initiator. No. You initiate. You do things different. You know, I mean, like, even in our feminine journey, this feminine walk, this feminine lifestyle, we can't vacillate back and forward into one minute being this girly girl into the next minute being this beast who will attack and ready to scratch a man's eyes out. Either you're soft or you're not. Either you're going to be girly or you're going to be a beast. Either you're going to walk in your femininity or you're going to control and be hardcore. Either you're going to decide to change and be one way or don't change and stay the same. Change. When we look at Hadessa in the book of Esther, chapter 2, Hadessa had all the reason in the world to stay stuck in pain, bitterness, unforgiveness. She lost her mother. She lost her father. She was a little slave girl taken from her country into from Israel into Persia, unfamiliar territory with no parents, adopted by her uncle. I'm quite sure that Hadessa had a lot of pain and a lot of things that she suffered that brought her much pain, bad memories, and maybe even some unforgiveness. But she didn't allow for her pain of the past to keep her from a bright, beautiful future change. Her whole life changed because Hadessa was a beautiful, sweet, radiant young lady who found favor with all those she came in contact with. Instead of her being bitter, bad attitude, snappy, unforgiving, she chose to let her beauty from within radiate on the from the inside out and she was given the opportunity to walk into a destiny that she didn't think was beyond her because of her past she was willing to change from being a little Israelite orphan into becoming a queen because she was given the opportunity. And in that opportunity being presented, Hadessa stepped out of 
being a slave girl without parents into becoming a queen, the wife of a king and stepping into a destiny that she didn't even know was ahead of her. Stepping out of Hadessa and into Queen Esther, into a purpose that God had ordained for her life. Now, the book of Esther, God is not mentioned. Prayer is not mentioned. Trust in God is not mentioned. But the unseen hand of God is all over the book of Esther. God's hand was in the favor upon Hadessa's life. The favor, the beauty, the radiance. Because when Hadessa was in Israel, the Israelites were God's people, God's chosen people. The unseen hand of God was all over Esther. Because Esther is a child of God. No matter in what land she was in, she was still a child of God. When Hadessa entered the palace with the potential to become queen, the favor, the unseen hand of God was all over Hadessa. Hadessa being chosen to be queen, the unseen hand of God was all over Hadessa. She was chosen because change had taken place where Hadessa changed from Hadessa and transitioned into Queen Esther. But she could not do that, holding on to bitterness. She could not do that, holding on to unforgiveness. She could not do that, holding on to the pains of the past. And the opportunity that she was given to become queen, she changed some things by purifying, cleansing out, detoxing from the things of the past, from the pains of the past. And she prepared, studied, learned, changed behavior, and prepared herself to take position as queen. So things must change in our lives for us to step out of the old routines, the old patterns, for us to change out of the cycles that we are caught in being stuck between a rock and a hard place, being stuck in different places and positions and not being able to get out of because we refuse to change. There's a destiny, a purpose, a calling on our lives that we cannot walk into until we decide to change from who we are and become even when we can't see it, the greater, the potential, the calling, the unseen God of hand, uh, hand of God upon our lives into walking into and becoming who we were ordained to be because we decided, yes, I'll change. So change is a necessity. Same way we change our shoes, from one cycle of life to the next cycle, the same way Queen Esther had to change, the same way there are some things in us that we need to examine and change 
and purify, cleanse ourselves from, and prepare ourselves with discipline, restricting ourselves, restraining ourselves to purchase something so valuable as a change life and walking in the beauty, the newness, the favor of who we are, whose we are, and who we are called to be. So we all must change in our lives, in our relationships. As feminine women, we must change from doing things and seeing things the way that worldly women, unfeminine women, see and do things. We must be disciplined and willing to change from the old into the new. There are some shoes that we cannot fit anymore, no matter how hard we try. We've grown out of those shoes. It's time to grow up and grow into that expensive quality pair of stilettos and walk in a new path, a new direction, and a new way because we've decided to change. Thank you for sharing this time with me, Daughters of Odessa. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday nights as I go live. And if you like my conversations, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Hit the like button if you enjoy the conversations. And if not, hit the unlike button. And I'll take into consideration some things that I need to change. Thank you for spending this time with me. Have a blessed and prosperous life.